on the number of the. So you can see the anodontia and the hyperodontia. What is anodontia? Anodontia means can be a true or pseudo. It means the number of the teeth are less. Most commonly seen in case of the ectodermal dysplasia. What is ectodermal dysplasia? Remember, whenever ectodermal dysplasia comes, the three things you have to remember. There's the three S, that is hypohidrosis, hypotrichosis, and hypotrichosis. Anodontia is also seen in case of the CL. Most commonly, anodontia is seen in the case of female tissue. Now, hyperodontia, that is supplementary. Examples are mesodense, distromolar, paramolar, and the peridens. So, now let's see the clinical picture of hyperodontia and the hyperodontia. In the hyperodontia, I have told it can be a mesodense, paramolar, peridens, and distromolar. So, what is mesodense? If a supernumerary tooth is present in the midline between two central incisors, it is known as mesiodens. What is distromolar? If a supernumerary tooth is present distal to third molar, it is known as distromolar. Then what is paramolar? Any supernumerary tooth present either buccally or lingually or proximally between first, second and third molar, it is known as paramolar. What is peridens? A supernumerary tooth present in the arch, either buccally or the lingually, it is known as peridens. Okay, except in case of first, second, third molar. If it is in the uh, area of the first, second, third molar, we have to told it as paramolar. If at any other place in the arch, we have to told it as a peridens. What is anodontia? I told you the absence of teeth. It can be hypodontia, oligodontia, or the anodontia. Nowadays, the hypodontia and the oligodontia terms are used interchangeably. But if more than six teeth are missing, we call it as oligodontia. So, there are certain genes responsible for a hypodontia or oligodontia. They are MSX1 gene, PEX9 gene, and XN2 gene. Why I mention these three genes? They are most commonly asked in the exam. They are gene responsible for the anodontia. They are the homeobox gene responsible for the dental apparatus formation. Then, little bit detail in the supernumerary teeth. Remember, the super, if the supernumerary uh, teeth are multiple, they are associated with syndrome. Like you can say a cleft lip, cleft palate, or a cleidocranial dysplasia, or a Gardner syndrome. This Supernumerary teeth are of different shape, based on shape, they are classified as a conical, composite odontome, uh, tuberculate, or a supplementary. So now we can see the clinical problems caused by the supernumerary teeth. Mostly in the exam, they ask the question in which all the four options are right, but you have to select most apt option. So whenever in case of supernumerary teeth, they ask what the most common problem caused by supernumerary teeth is displacement or rotation of permanent teeth followed by delayed or impaired eruption of succeeding teeth. Then the other causes will come like it can cause a crowding or a diastema or a cyst formation and the rare is eruption to the nasal cavity. So let's now focus on the structure disturbance in the development of teeth. So as we know the three important structure of the teeth that is enamel and the lens. So let's now focus first on the enamel. How enamel formation takes place? takes place in two phases, matrix formation and the mineralization of the matrix. So, disturbance can be at this two points. First, we will deal with the amylogenesis imperfecta. It is of three types, hypoplastic type, hypocalcified type and the hypomaturation type. I will explain you in detail in the following slide with the help of pictures that how these three variants look different than each other. So, remember the amylogenesis imperfecta is an ectodermal disease with a normal mesodermal component. Don't get confused. Let's come to the enamel hypoplasia. You can see most commonly in day-to-day -day practice enamel hypoplasia, molar incisor hypomineralization. Why it happens? It happens that is due to defective matrix formation. What are the causes for enamel hypoplasia? I will not give you an exhaustive list but the important points. It can cause due to nutritional imbalance. A deficiency of vitamin A, D, C, of hypocalcemia or a phosphorus deficiency. 
it can occur in exanthematous disease what exanthematous disease there are viral disorders like a uh, measles chicken pox what happen during that period there will be a temporary elevation in the body temperature so due to the increased body temperature there will be a disturbance in the amyloblast formation most commonly seen in the first two years of the birth then it can occur in the syphilis or hypoglycemia i told you and then a turnus too can occur due to a trauma also or the infection of the deciduous tree what happened because of this periapical infection the outer layer of the amyloblast get affected resulting in the hypoplastic tooth formation then the most commonly we know the, the fluoride ingestion if it is more than 1 ppm how it can cause the fetal or the mortal enamel now we will see the type of amylogenesis imperfecta so first will be the hypoplastic type in hypoplastic type the enamel will get thin the surface of the enamel can be either a rough it can be either a smooth or it can be a pitted whatever in the hypocalcified type the enamel will become a lusterless dull enamel the color can be any it can be honey color brown color yellow color in this stage the enamel will get easily chipped off in hypomaturation type you can see the frosty appearance of the enamel the opaque enamel most commonly it is seen in the incisal one third of the tooth sometimes it is also known as snow cap phenomenon now in our hypoplasia so you can see the opaque enamel how the brown discolouration of the enamel has happened remember nowadays we most commonly see the term mih that is molar incisor hypomyelitis how it is different than this enamel hypoplasia here you can see the symmetric distribution of the lesion but in enamel hypoplasia there will be a asymmetric distribution of the lesion on the first molar and the incisor so let's now focus on the inherited dentin defects that is dentinosis imperfecta dentin dysplasia and regional odonto dysplasia so what is dentinogenesis imperfecta it is defective dentin how the dentin will be there just imagine there is a thin layer of normal enamel or a cementum followed by a normal dentin very thin layer of normal dentin and below that that will be the disorganized dentin with very few teeth as you know dentin is a resilient structure provide resiliency to the enamel and cementum so if dentin is improperly formed we know that enamel and cementum will not be able to stay for a long time so what are the other means for the dentinogenesis imperfecta we can tell it as odontogenesis imperfecta and brown teeth syndrome so there are various classification given for the dentinogenesis imperfecta the most apt classification are the three given by witkop shield and a revised shield classification so what witkop has suggested he has told a two thing that is a hereditary opalescent dentin if only defects are found in the teeth then he told that the used term dentinogenesis imperfecta when it is associated with the osteogenesis imperfecta Third classification is given on the screen. There is a type one, type two, and type three. Type one is a DI and the OI. Type two is hereditary opalescent dentin, and type three is a Bradywine type. What is Bradywine? It is just a racial population in whom the dentinous imperfecta has been shown with a wide variety of the expression. Like there will be multiple teeth involved, multiple pulp exposures, or it is not a like a shell teeth, etc. Nowadays. according to the latest research it has been found that dentinosis imperfecta and the osteogenesis imperfecta both are in distinct variety so in the revised shield classification remember there are only two that is type 1 and type 2 type 1 is a hereditary opalescent dentin and type 2 is a hereditary white type some common features for the hereditary opalescent teeth that is scallop bej teeth will be attrited and there will be a dumpy crown appearance of the So let's now go for the dentin dysplasia, rootless teeth. The shield is classified in two types. There is a type one and type two. Remember, type one is a radicular dentin dysplasia, and type two is a coronal dentin dysplasia. 
What happens in a tight bond? There will be a rootless dentine, rootless teeth. There will be no dentine surrounding the tooth structure. The tooth will appear clinically normal, but it will be mobile. When you see the histopathology of such a dentine dysplasia teeth, it looks like a lava flowing around the boulder. What happens? The dentinal tissues will be blocked. So, whichever dentine will form, it will form like a lava flowing around the boulder. A cascade of dentine will be formed. What is coronal dentine dysplasia? In that, the pulp chamber will be large. Looks like a thistle tube appearance. Now we go to the reason of the dysplasia, very rare condition known as a ghost tooth. What happens in this case? The density of teeth will increase so much that the enamel dentine will be very thin and the pulp chamber will appear large. Remember, maxillary teeth are affected more commonly than the mandibular teeth. It is also known as odontogenic dysplasia. Now let's focus on the clinical features. See how the dentine pleogenesis the imperfecta looks. Clinically, the teeth will have a color like a dark fiery red color will be there okay or sometimes it could be a brownish red also then on radiograph you can see the bulbous crown will be there the thin dentine large pulp chamber will be there in dentine dysplasia type 2 i told you thistle to begin with this is the classical picture of thistle to here okay then odonto dysplasia see how the thin enamel dentin cementum is there and large pulp chamber. It looks like a ghost tooth. So, why dentinogenesis imperfecta occur? Due to mutation of some genes like a DSTP, dentin siloposcopy. As the aminogenesis imperfecta also occur due to a mutation of certain genes like a amylex, amylogenesis, okay, MFP20, enamel, enamel lysine gene. Then calicrine 4 and enamel. These four genes are responsible for the aminogenesis imperfecta. So, how do we treat this dentinogenesis imperfecta and aminogenesis imperfecta? We have to go for the full coverage restoration. If the child is in growing shape, we can go for the interim restoration like a stainless steel crown followed by the future permanent restoration. In aminogenesis imperfecta, there in mild cases or moderate cases, you can go for the enamel modification technique that is a enamel microabrasion. Okay. The technique for that was given by a crow in which the 18% HCL along with humus is being used applied for the tooth for 5 seconds followed by a rubber cup prophylaxis with a fluorinated base. So the procedure is repeated until they get the thin proper color of the enamel. In this way, amylogenesis and dentinogenesis imperfecta are created. In case of dentine dysplasia and odonto dysplasia, in most of severe cases, the tooth has to get extracted and followed by a proper prosthetic rehabilitation. So, now we have come to the end of our lecture. The last topic is fistula cyst of the oral region. They are also known as inclusion cyst of the developmental system. Why inclusion of developmental cysts? They are mostly found as the embryonic process of union life. They are a true cyst. Their cavity is lined by epithelium filled with some semi solid or a solid matter. So we come to the most common cyst that is nasopalate and duct cyst, also known as incisal canal cyst. It is also termed it as NPDC, mostly found in the Midline of the anterior maxilla, prevalent in the mid. Orthography appears as a harsh shape red in the regular system. Then, one of the features of the nasal palate and duct cyst on aspiration, there will be a clear or a stock level, the tooth will be non metal and sometimes pain can also be. How could you treat the region? You have to go for the inclination of the teeth, either you can use a buckle approach or a parental approach. And the second cyst is the globular maxillary cyst. It is a debatable cyst. Why debatable cyst? Because previously in the shear classification, the WHO classification of the 92 and 96, it was included under the heading of cyst. But on the recent WHO 2017 classification, it is not there. I included here because it was asked in examination many times. 
It is also known as pre-maxilla maxillosis, the term given by the Chinese. For the reason, it has an inverted pier seen between the lateral incisor and the now come to the third cyst that is mesoalveolar cyst, also known as mesolabial cyst and a clustered cyst. I have written only not radiographically. It means it is a soft tissue cyst that involves the bone secondary. The last cyst that is the palatine cyst of newborn, also known as gingival cyst, they are characteristic cysts. They are of two types, bone closures and the extreme form. If it is seen at the junction of the hard and soft palate. It is a most nodules. It is found along the mid palate and lastly, it is a obscene palate. They are mostly formed from the epithelial remnants of a dental lamina. After the fourth week of in utero, four weeks in utero, it is being done. So, see that pictures in the radiographs. There is a radiographist. You can watch here the hard shaped radiolucency. Here you can find out the global maxillus, inverted pear shaped between the lateral incisor and the canine. These are keratin filters, both obscene calls, and this is the nasal radiation. You can see here the swelling near the arrow of the nose. What happens in this? The mucobuccal fold as well as the it affects the floor of the nose. And mostly the swelling is found near the arrow of the nose. Remember the picture is of the female, it is more prevalent, about 75% more increased prevalence in the So that's all friend for the today's lecture. We have learned about the developmental distribution of feet and paraoral structures. Along with that, we have seen the clinical and radiographic pictures. If you are in doubt, any further clarification you want, you can write in the comment box below. So if you want the notes of the current chapter, you can mail me or you can ping me in the WhatsApp. You will get it. If you like it, just press the like button and subscribe it and share it with your friends. See you in the next week with the another topic of the oral pathology and the oral medicine. Till then, bye. Take care and study well. And all the best.